today we're exploring an optimization technique called object pooling in game development and it will be demonstrated in Godot and we'll walk through the code, explain some stats that I will show you on screen and I will help you understand what terms like uh, microseconds mean so that you actually know what's being displayed here on the screen. So in here we have our main script for this demonstration. Uh, this script handles spawning of two types of bullets, uh, which are pooled and non-pooled bullets. Let's break down how this works, and I will show you what information we're tracking. Alright, so to start, we have the pooled and non-pooled bullets uh, variables. Now these will count how many bullets have spawned for each different method. And then next up, we have the amount of times they have both spawned. Uh, which is used to store the time taken in microseconds for each bullet to spawn. So we use microseconds to actually uh, measure extremely short time intervals, uh, which is perfect for tracking the tiny durations taken by functions in game development. So a microsecond is uh, one millionth of a second, uh, which is pretty optimal for uh, showing you this example here. Right, so let's, let's take a look here at the spawn bullets function. So when we spawn bullets, we will record the time uh, taken for each operation. And the time.getTixUsec uh, helps us measure this time in microseconds. And then we calculate how long each bullet spawn takes. And we will add that value over to our tracking array, uh, which we can use later on in the UI to show you the uh, amount of microseconds it took. So now when we actually have the game running, we can see that there are two bullet spawners. Uh, one is labeled pooled bullets and one is labeled non-pooled bullets. Uh, so green is the pooled one and non-pooled is the red one. And each spawner creates bullets at set intervals and the time it takes uh, is displayed in real time, as we can see on top over here. So then what we can actually see on top is the FPS, which is just the FPS of uh, this scene here. Then the amount of bullets that are being spawned, uh, pooled and non-pooled. And then in here is where it gets interesting. We can see the spawn times uh, in microseconds for the green uh, bullets uh, that are being pooled. And then the red ones that are not being pooled. So we can see that this is actually a performance increase of around four times. As we can also see is the uh, spawn times in microseconds for green are most of the time below 30 and red is almost always above 100, which is quite a big difference if we actually use a whole lot of bullets in our game. Or we could also apply this anywhere else where a lot of objects are being spawned. Uh, a good way to do uh, a fix for this is to uh, use pooled bullets and actually use pooling just in general. So that's what we'll be taking a look at over here uh, so that you understand the concept. Before we do this, I just want to show you how I actually go ahead and calculate these different uh, statistics. So in here I have a update stats function that ensures the displayed stats are updated every frame. Uh, this includes calculating the average spawn time. And to get this, we use a helper function called calculate average, which is right up here. Now this sums up the recorded times and divides it by the number of samples we use. So if we actually watch these stats in action, uh, we can see that the pooling of bullets consistently results in a lower average spawn time. And this is because pooling reuses existing bullet objects instead of creating new ones, which is computationally uh, cheaper to do because we just use previous ones that have been instantiated already instead of destroying and just creating a new one. So let's take a look at how we do this. Alright, so as I've said shortly before, uh, object pooling is a technique where a set of objects is created ahead of time and is reused whenever it's needed. So instead of creating and destroying objects repeatedly, uh, which could be costly in terms of performance, we take an existing unused object from the pool, use it, and then return it to the pool for future reuse. So as we can see in our initialize bullet pool function, that is right up here somewhere, right here. We create a fixed number of bullet instances at the start and then store them in an array called bullet pool uh, in our case. 
this pool will act as a sort of reservoir for all of our objects. So then in our get bullet function, uh, what we do is we basically go ahead and uh, check when it's time to spawn a bullet. The function will look through the bullet pool and find an object that is not being used currently. Uh, if one is available, it returns that bullet for spawning. And if not, it'll return null and uh, indicates that uh, yeah, all bullets are in use and no new bullets can spawn. So then we have the spawn pooled bullet. And in here, uh, it basically does the logic uh, to spawn the bullets. It'll check for an available bullet from the pool and then set its position to the spawner. And then it calls the start method uh, to activate it. So this means we're avoiding the overhead of creating and adding a new node each time we want to try to spawn a bullet. So just to continue a little bit, uh, actually we can see the performance is going down quite a bit because I've been letting this run for a long time, but that's all right. So the pulled bullets are still actually uh, 3.8 times faster than the uh, red non-pulled bullets because uh, the lower the time over here, the more performance we are getting. And that is because we use pooling, uh, which results in efficient memory usage and just faster performance overall. All right, so now you know how object pooling works, uh, why it can be beneficial, and how you can track performance with precise timings if you want to in your own Godot project. So if you found this tutorial helpful, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell for more game development insights. And also, thank you for 100 subs. I think we just hit it today. So a huge thank you for that. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.